Welcome, everybody, to another Voice of Nick show. We're doing more of our post-Homerica artwork here. And uh, we're working on the birds currently, but we're going to kind of work our way around the picture. See what else we can get in there. Right now we're working on this guy. Let's get this in, and then there's two more birds, I think, at the bottom. This picture was an interesting challenge because um, rather than sort of um, inventing our own characters, we had when we originally laid this out, we had just used existing characters, reposed them, put them, you know, put new designs in around them. But like the birds were pretty much identical to where they appear in another painting, and Memnon's costume design at the time was pretty much identical to where he appears in another painting, even though, you know, they didn't look exact in the layout or, you know, the pose and all that stuff. It was still a little bit um, too derivative for me. So I, I like that we have these unique elements in here now. Let's save the pattern for later. What other elements might we get in there? I kind of like this thing. Maybe we could add a couple of little little dots. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, now we move on to this last one here.
So what do we want for this one? What other designs do we have here? Maybe we'll do this little triangle thing. I don't think we have that anywhere on these birds. Uh, so we'll put the triangles into this. We'll make it a little bit thicker. Welcome one hand stream into the show. We're currently working on our book illustrations. The old late burning the, the midnight oil, the, the 4 a.m. oil, as the saying goes. Welcome in. Okay, so. Maybe we could put this design onto one of these wing sections. That's pretty cool. We could do it for this part too. I don't think we need that little piece. Maybe we could put a red section in there. Okay, so that's everything. Now we're gonna turn on this flipped colors. And we're gonna turn on our accent layers. And now we wanna do what we did for the other ones, but we wanna do it for, or what, do what we did for this, but do it for everything else. Okay, so now we're gonna do that. Good. One hand stream saying, love the podcast. It always inspires me to try new stuff. Well, I'm really glad to hear it. Uh, and thanks for listening. I'm glad you like the show. Anybody who doesn't know what one hand stream is talking about, the Twitch playbook is a free weekly podcast I created to help you guys with your Twitch channels. It's on iTunes, Spotify, all the major podcast platforms. Yeah, I'm glad you like the show. I think I wanted this to be... Let's just add this in real quick. This was supposed to be white. It's really hard to see what we're doing with this color. Let's change the background color for a second, actually. How are you doing, One Hand Stream? What, uh, I assume it is a decent hour for you. Possibly East Coast, possibly overseas. In Los Angeles, it is 4 a.m. Yeah, that makes it a little easier for us to see what we're doing here. Good. Okay, now we're gonna take this. We might need to brighten it a little bit so that we can distinguish a little better. One hand saying, um, in Finland, it is 2 p.m., 1400. Oh, you're at work. Oh, wow. Getting a little, uh, Twitch, Twitch action in there. Good stuff. And thanks for, uh, thanks for watching at work. The best way to kill time before a meeting is to watch Twitch. 
I agree about that. Okay, so we want to go... Hmm. If I was really planning this out, I would do it in the other direction. So for the rest of these guys, we should... Let's turn this off. We should do the accent colors first. Let's take this real quick. Use this color. Doesn't really matter what color we use. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It could be like a yin yang thing here if we did like. this and then we erased the section would that work yeah that's cool all right i think i was originally going to make this red but that might be too much so we'll well let's take a look what would this look like Yeah, I think it's too much. This one already has a red neck anyway. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to here. We're gonna turn off our guides real quick, turn this up. And we'll just fill in this little section. Okay. So for now, Let's go back to the normal size, turn on the guides, and we're only gonna do accent colors first. Okay. Yeah, let's put a little bit more space here, though. I'm wondering if I should make it like that or more of like a little square inside of the neck. I kind of like the square inside the neck better. rather than like a cobra or whatever, like a a snake where it's like a, a band all the way around. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. One hand saying, what's the book gonna be about? So um, I, I'm publishing my own edition, my own illustrated annotated edition of a, an ancient Greek epic called Post Homerica, uh, and it's the uh, story of the fall of Troy. So uh, if you're familiar with the Iliad, the uh, Homer's story about Troy, this takes place directly after the Iliad and uh, basically tells the rest of the story of the Trojan War. So uh, yeah, we're making the illustrations for my uh edition live on stream and then we've also i'm also making narrating and producing an audiobook version uh which we've also been doing live so a little bit of of all the disciplines involved in like the production of this one it's been a really fun thing though because since it's um you know my own project and i uh you know have the ability to uh the rights to do it, 
because of the fact that it's obviously it's, you know, the version that I'm using is like out of print. So I'm able to broadcast myself making the book and all that stuff. Of course, until our version gets published, it won't be out of print anymore, I guess. But um, yeah, so we're able to like actually show it uh, being made, which has been a lot of fun. Let's make this like a half measure here. I will post. There should be a command about it. There we go. Nickbot is uh, pretty tired. It looks like he's taking his time with the commands. Okay, let's do this. One in the stream saying, I know the book, but I never read any of them. Cool. Um, yeah, it, I re highly recommend all of them. <laughs> Uh, Iliad and Odyssey are classics. Those are, I was forced to read the Odyssey in school and didn't understand a word of it, but, uh, later grew to appreciate it. And the Iliad is now one of my all time favorites. Let's make this a little bit more cut out here. One hand saying, uh, cool opportunity, nice opportunity to learn new skills. Yeah, well, I've never published a book before, so that's, that's a whole thing. It was a real, um, process getting the, you know, through all the editing of the text and making sure everything was correct. And these kind of books, uh, stories use a lot of like really archaic terms and words and a lot of proper nouns of like every single character uh, and place, which I had to verify and come up with pronunciations for when I'm doing the audiobook. I'm actually publishing in the book edition, publishing a pronunciation guide of like hundreds and hundreds of names and places because I had to make one to do the audiobook anyway. So I figured I would publish it in the book edition. Um, so that was a whole uh, thing that I had never experienced before. I've published audiobooks before, but I've uh, never, rather, I've I've narrated audiobooks written by other people before, but I have never done it where I am the rights holder and the narrator. So that was definitely new. One hand saying, I haven't read fiction in about 15 years. Wow. You read mostly to learn new skills, like not, yeah, like, uh, self-help, like nonfiction stuff. Wow. Yeah. I know a lot of people who, who swear off fiction. I, I personally love a good, um, uh, and you know, self-help book or, uh, you know, uh, uh, nonfiction story biographies and stuff. But, uh, I don't know. I, I always have to intersperse it with, with fiction. I can't, I can't go full on the, uh, on the nonfiction stuff for too long. I've been trying to go through like a lot more classic stories, um, and just kind of fill in my gaps of 
general worldliness because I um, didn't really like to read in school. So I, whenever I did have an assigned book that I was supposed to read, I would just not really cheat, but you know, weasel my way through getting a good grade because I was like good at writing um, essays and stuff. So I, I never really read or understood books that I was assigned in school and I've been kind of like going through that stuff in the past years. What's like a recommendation for a nonfiction book that you, uh, that you like? I definitely have a few that are favorites of mine. I'm not sure like what categories you're into. I, I, you're talking about learning new skills, so this doesn't really apply to that, but right now, nonfiction wise, I'm reading the George Lucas biography that just came out not too long ago, I don't think, uh, which is great. It's really fascinating. But yeah, not exactly the realm that you're talking about. Let's make this cross all the way over here. Yeah, and then new skills wise, I also, um, I mean, I went to school for art for like over a decade. You know, I was, I was doing it in after school programs and stuff and through through freshman year of college, I was on track to be like, uh, in school for art, but I, uh, eventually switched to film, but I, whenever I would study in school, it was always on the, uh, the track of like photorealistic stuff where you're like painting with oils and, you know, doing, uh, um, things with shadows that are, you know, there's no line work or anything. It's nothing like this. So that trying to emulate the different various styles of Greek art, it was pretty fun. I was doing a lot of research and, you know, going to museums and reading books and stuff about how they would make their art and try to just kind of take in all the lessons. And it's been a lot of fun. We, we've We've gotten a lot of good looks out of it. When I'm saying no real recommendations, I read some philosophy, educational stuff, things that help in your job, your special education teacher. Oh, well, then that's definitely good to read. Yeah, books that just give you tips on what to, I guess, like teaching techniques or more like things that would inspire you for lesson plans and stuff. That's cool. Um... I do, I I would say like if I'm talking about my favorite learn a new skill book, if it, if we're talking like general, that doesn't necessarily apply to like a specific skill, I guess. Uh, the War of Art is my, it's probably my all time favorite nonfiction book, which is just, uh, it's about writing, but it's really just about anything where it's a guy who's, uh, the guy who wrote Legend of Bagger Vance and, uh, Gates of Fire. He, um, sort of takes you through his process of like getting up in the morning and being productive every day, which I think is a great skill to have in any field. Uh, and it certainly applies to what I try to do and in all the things that I do, you know, besides just this. Yeah, that's, I've read that one four times in the last, you know, two years since I discovered it. Uh, I really like that one. That's pretty cool. I like that. When I'm saying World of Art is something I should look up, many people have recommended it. Yeah, that's one of those ones that's like a don't miss it type of, type of book for sure. Um, that's a big time recommend. Uh, otherwise, I really like um, the four-hour work week, which is 
I don't know that it really applies to your field. Like it, in teaching, I don't think it can really cut down your work hours. Uh, but it's it's uh, expands beyond that. It's the main thing of the book is like how you would turn your job into a remote job where you don't have to go in and all that stuff doesn't really apply to teaching, but I really like it because it's a, gives you this kind of like philosophy of, of sort of uh, how do you do the things that you want to do in life and, you know, kind of prioritize your time so that you could do the things that you care about outside of work. Uh, I really like that one. Yeah. I like this little strip around the triangles here. I wonder if we should color in this section here or something. Maybe put another little red. Maybe the red's on the top this time. Love that, but we'll keep it for now. The top part makes it look strange, but it might just be because of the uh, background layer. So we'll try some stuff. Ladies and gents, so that's going to do it for this one. Uh, we're getting close with the birds. Then we go back to Memnon and redo his line art for the final. And then we actually put all the texturing on the picture and make it look not like a cartoon. So uh, we're getting close. Guys, it's going to do it, though. Thank you for joining. The channel is called The Voice of Nick. The book we're working on is called Post America, The Fall of Troy. And uh, you'll find it on Amazon, audiobook on Audible and Amazon coming soon. I'll see you guys next time.